Hi, I'm Shauna, and I think you'll be totally surprised when I say I paint birds. Not. I want to send a shout out to Donna, Josh, Hemi, and Isabel. If it wasn't for Donna, the particular painting I'm doing today of a white-faced heron would not have happened. The story is in the video. Take a moment to subscribe, like the video, hit the bell notification so you don't miss the next one that comes out. I'm going to grab my paint tools and let's get going. Here I'm beginning to set up the palette with cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, permanent alizarin crimson, indigo, ultramarine blue, permanent green light, viridian, raw umber. Later I will be adding in ivory black. I am finding it much easier to put small dabs of white next to each of the colors and it keeps the accidental contamination under better control. I began this painting in Australia, but it was nearing the end of our time there, which meant we were traveling and our focus was really to spend as much time as we could with our son before we left. So it's time to get this little painting finished. I love the way that the plants are softly lit deep in the ravine under the tall canopy of trees. There was little sunlight that could penetrate down that far. This made the colors so much more saturated and richer. I just quickly want to say thank you so much for pressing the play button. I really appreciate your support. This is the first time that I am painting ferns. Throughout this painting I will try different approaches in doing them. One thing I figured out is that when painting this small, 14 by 28 centimeters, that I really just need to give the impression of the fern fronds. I often work so much larger, which allows me to really dive deep into the subtle value and chroma shifts that make for the realism that I love to create. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that level of detail just wouldn't work so well in such a small format. Plus, I really am not a miniature painter by any stretch of the imagination. In the intro of this video, I gave a, a shout out to an Australian family who lived in the same building as our son. Just days after we arrived in Sydney, Donna was out walking her lovely little Isabel when she came to the door to catch my attention. Oh my goodness, it was a white-faced heron. I was so excited, but worried that the bird would be gone before I could get that camera out and get out of the house. Thankfully, it didn't flit away. This allowed me to even take a short four second video on my phone, which I'm gonna share on my blog. But as soon as it started to move, the phone was down and I was out taking these amazing photos. So I'm working along, trying to get the background in place and finally feeling frustrated by the process, I realize that the brush that I'm working with is just far too small. I have larger brushes right next to me, but alas, sometimes the focus is so great that I miss the small details until they become a bigger problem. As I start on the ferns, I am getting them placed in and then I'm going to add the background dark color around them. The heron is so hyper-focused on skink lizard hunting that it never really seems to notice me. I do have a 100 by 400 millimeter lens which gives me the ability to keep my distance and this is really a good thing when you're photographing animals or birds. I'm placing a few of the photos that I got of this beautiful bird on my blog. And I have included the skink lizard that was in my son's living room, sunning on the couch just prior to the heron coming for its lunch. We had the doors open and it just came on in. I captured images of the skink trying desperately hard to get out of that heron's bill. It wriggled and wrapped its tail around the bill, but there was no stop in this process. I even got a series of photos that you can see on my blog of the skink going down the very long throat of the white-faced heron and you can see its shape as it goes down. This time when I'm working on the ferns, I'm building the shapes of them by using the dark background paint to create the negative outline of the plant. I wanted to test this hypothesis that if I did it this way, 
darker the back and creating the negative space, it might be an easier way to paint the ferns in the future. One of the things that I notice when I'm really watching and looking close as I get to see how a bird operates. In this type of bird, I noticed an amazing adaptation that these herons have. Their eyes are situated on the side of their head, and this is a problem when hunting for food that is directly in front of you. But their eyes do this very cool thing. They can rotate their eyeballs to look straight forward down their bill as they're hunting. It was so cool to see. It makes them very efficient hunters, and I found it enlightening to watch the whole process. I felt like creating the negative space of the fern would work better and adding the fronds on top of the dark background. I do like that gouache is opaque. As the heron is hunting, it is moving very carefully, watching closely, and is quite successful in capturing a number of lizards. The skink in the house had left, and I'm pretty sure it didn't have time to hide away, and it was the first fatality. Have you ever had the experience where you're painting along and you paint an area with the wrong color? Oops, <laughs> this is when I realized I was painting the bird, not a leaf or the background. So the nice thing about gouache is I can remove it fairly easily and I can paint over what's left behind. Now on to the heron. It's such an elegant gray bird. I did a range of values with ivory black from value nine to value two. And then I added just a touch of the ultramarine blue to emphasize that blue gray quality of the feathers. In the first pass, I am trying to get the paint on, filling the area, kind of like a coloring book. More details will be put on top of that first pass. What I found interesting is how the bird is gray, including the beak, and even the eye color is gray with a little touch of yellow. So fascinating. I seem to have promptly forgot to continue to work by creating the negative shape of the fern when I started the next section of the plant. Really, part of what's going on is I'm still not in regular schedule for painting and my concentration is not very high and I'm working by natural light, which causes a lot of changes. There's just times that I have to stop videoing, then I have to go away and then I come back. And Anyway, I, I'm working on a permanent solution to that lighting issue. I am finding that I'm painting the ferns really in a much more free flowing way, though I have to keep coming back and back to get to the level of doneness I want it to be. So I'm working hard just to get the idea of the shape of the plant and not get bogged down in the little details. The sun didn't make it to too much of the scene when I was photographing. But you can see a bit of the fern has captured some sunlight, which gives it a bit of drama in a scene where the light is pretty muted. Here are some of the darker background ferns. One of the things that is striking about gouache is that when I paint it on, it looks too light, but quickly it dries to be quite a bit darker. I'm finding it quite intriguing, and I'm getting a handle on it. I feel like this shift is far more pronounced than either acrylic or watercolor. As I work on the ferns, I'm just shaping the impression of them, not really spending a lot of time making them perfect. Though I have to admit, if this was a big painting, I would spend all the time I needed to get those delicious, lovely details with subtle undulations of value and chroma. But my intention is to step back from hyperrealism on these little paintings. As I mentioned earlier, the eyes are captivating as they are sort of this gray with a touch of yellow. I find it wonderfully curious that their eyes shift forward so that they can hunt so efficiently. I often find it's like I'm in a secret world when I'm watching birds. I would be photographing a bird and people would be just walking by. Rarely do they even look as they are going from one point to another in their daily busy schedules. This was the first of many times that I witnessed the white-faced heron hunting in the ravine next to our son's place. There were actually two of them hunting or hanging around. 
It might have been that they were a mated pair, but it was fall and they weren't nesting at the time. I am starting to feel more at ease with gouache. I have a bit more of a handle on some of the properties of this medium. I'm finding that I really like working with gouache. After this sketchbook is filled and I really do know gouache inside out and backwards, I'm planning a tips and tricks video to share. Here I am putting on the very light long feathers along the back end of the heron. Notice that I put a bit of paint down, then quickly use a slightly damp flat brush to pull the paint out. This softens the paint out in a very nice way. Coming back to the eye shape, continuing to build the face up. The lighting is quite soft on this bird, so the value shifts are gentle. I have quite a number of photos of this heron or its partner just walking along the street, crossing the road, hunting in the garden across the way, or hunting along the sidewalk. Just the other day we were out in our backyard here in Yellowknife and my husband looked around and he said, I keep waiting for the heron to come to visit again. So we did enjoy our long sojourn in Australia, that is for sure. I build up the leaves in a couple of passes to bring them to life. Can you see that some of the leaves are more transparent? Though gouache is an opaque paint, if you add enough water, it becomes more semi-transparent than fully transparent in a way that watercolor is. I will add another layer with a thicker paint application, which will bring that opacity up. These ferns took several passes to accomplish. I have to say that I love the ferns in Australia. They're so beautiful and lush. But then the whole ecosystem is beautiful and lush. By changing the value, notice that I'm creating depth in the ferns. The lighter ones look like they're closer and the darker ones recede into the background looking like they are farther away. This is one way of creating the illusion of perspective on a two-dimensional page. It is such an informative experience watching these birds in actions over the months that we were there. We got a sense of their rhythm, we watched the noisy minor birds set off an alarm when the heron showed up and even group together to chase the heron away. Though these birds are skilled hunters, there are still so many skinks of all sizes that there is no worry that the herons will run out of their prey anytime soon. A reminder that I have photos of this experience on my blog and the link is below. I was looking at the reference image and I realized that I'd forgotten to paint in the leg. Not that there was much of a leg to see, but it would anchor the heron in space. The other leg is hidden away from view by the greenery. Here are the final tweaks of the branches and leaves. We're getting close to the end. Was fun. I had a great time painting this. I'm, this painting smaller and with gouache has been interesting experience for me. Anyway, I will see you in my very next art video.